and amongst other things he is convinced that the earth is flat now there's tons of videos and stuff you'll find on the internet and on youtube about this it's sort of hard to understand why people would want to believe that the earth is flat some of it is rooted in the christian ideal that we are all down here in a state of sin and god is above us and if god is only above us the earth can't be round because that would mean god is sort of everywhere which weirdly i thought that was what god was anyway so we'll speak to a conspiracy theorist you can make up your own minds one double three six nine three we'll have um tv with uh, jane holmes as well conspiracy theorists fascinating i really do some of the effort it must take to believe that the earth is flat or that contrails that come out of engine exhaust are actually chemtrails that are mind-altering chemicals that the government is dropping on our heads to do god knows what the, the amount of torturous leaps of logic you have to go through to believe in this stuff is amazing in a moment we are going to speak to a well-known american conspiracy theorist who says that yes indeed the earth is flat first though luke joins us uh, luke good morning yeah good day how are you tom yeah not bad luke what's happening Oh, look, I just wanted to know why there's a, um, a military Black Hawk helicopter circling around Seaford area. Yeah. So is it an Army one or a Navy? I think the Navy, there's a Navy version of that, although I'm not sure they're in service yet. Uh, is it an Army helicopter? I managed to get my, um, my phone camera out and put it on its full, you know, sort of um, uh, zoom, and it had the Army um, camouflage painting on it. So I assume it's Army. Okay. Well, if you took a photo or some footage, Luke, uh, maybe send it in to us, in Mitchell at 3aw.com.au, and we'll try and uh, get in touch with the ADF, the Australian Defence Force, and find out what is going on. I mean, usually when the Black Hawk helicopter is doing that, it is some sort of training. For example, the I think the commando regiment, one of them, used to be based around St Kilda. I think they often used to do training bayside. Maybe it's something to do with that. Our next guest is an American who believes that the earth is indeed completely flat. Mark Sargent, uh, good morning. Hey, Tom. Thanks very much for having me. Well, it's uh, very kind of you to lend us your time. So well, why do you think the Earth is flat when there's so much evidence to the contrary? Uh, I think it is because when I was trying to, to prove the globe, basically in a court of law, metaphorically speaking, back in 2015, I, I ran out of arguments for the globe. Um, the, the, the big ones would be the ones that get most people into our community are long distance photography. Mm -hmm. You can see things way, way further uh, than you should be able to. You know, boats going over the horizon, uh, HD cameras change that almost immediately where we can bring things back into frame, which are way, way further away than they should be. Um, second would be that my favorite, of course, is uh, gravity versus the vacuum of space. Right. Vacuum, any scientist will tell you, they will tell you vacuum wins all the time, but our atmosphere is still here. And yet, how is that possible? The vacuum, the vacuum of space should have ripped our atmosphere off almost immediately. Well, but, but, two big one. Okay, but if that's the case, I mean, whether the Earth is flat or round, if, if you're saying that the vacuum of space should get rid of the, uh, the atmosphere, wouldn't, wouldn't it disappear in, in either case? Wouldn't what disappear? The atmosphere. Oh, oh, oh! I'm sorry. Yeah, you're abs you're absolutely right. Uh, sorry, we should back up a little bit. Not only do I think it's flat, uh, what we basically say is there doesn't even have to be space. You're living in a box, a building, a planetarium, uh, no different than the Truman Show, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and everything that you see in the sky, be it planets, stars, meteors, whatever, are just lights on the ceiling, no different oh. than they would be in a planetarium. So you're living you're living in a pressurized system. Well, but, but I mean, I mean, that's sort of like what in medieval times they they thought that the stars were pinpricks uh, in the firmament through which God's light shone. I mean, are you are you saying that is is this planetarium you describe is it a, a creation of God or or some other being? Well, uh, it's something bigger than us. Yeah, let, let's clarify that really quick. We had nothing to do with the building of this place. And you're absolutely right. All the ancient cultures, if you type into Google ancient cosmology and click on images, you everybody drew the exact same thing, which was some sort of snow globe. And yeah, whoever built this, it's one of two things. Either it's an ancient civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves, or some sort of deity. But really, at that point, you're just splitting hairs. Mm. Because one man's advanced tech is another man's... Magic, God. yeah. Okay, so, so I mean, plenty of astronauts go up into orbit. Some have even been to the moon. I mean, the, the people who go on the International Space Station can, in fact, see that yeah. the Earth is a globe. What, what would you say to them? Mm. 
Uh, unfortunately, being an American, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, uh, the American space program is an absolute sham from, from beginning to end, always has been. Uh, in fact, it's interesting because inside America, I get it. I understand why a lot of people here believe in our space program, you know, rah, rah, wave the flag, go team. But outside, I ask everybody outside of the United States, when I go there, I go, why do you believe the Americans went to space? And they all answer the same way. It's like, well, because we saw it on television. And the news would never, you know, television would never lie to us. The news stations would never lie. And I go, come on, the American? Because the uh, Americans never lie about anything ever. We we are the kings of illusion over here. Okay, but I mean, there's been uh, an Australian astronaut. There's a couple who have been up into the uh, space station. There's a famous Canadian who's saying uh, ground control to Major Tom. There are Russians. There are Chinese yep. Taikonauts. Are they all lying about this? At, at at the highest level, yes. Uh, do they do they know why they're lying? A lot of them know. The Apollo astronauts, yes, they absolutely told them why why they were doing this, and they all became basket cases later. I mean, they crawled into bottles, and then they were real recluses that hardly did any interviews. Nowadays, it's mostly just military people that sign mm. non disclosure agreements. I mean, if you go up there, I mean, and they're high ranking, especially in the United States. We only send up uh, Air Force officers, usually colonels or higher. And, you know, at that point, you can't say anything because it's a whole different court of law. I mean, if you say anything at that point, it's treason. It's not court. Right. So, so if, if you know the Earth is flat and one, you know, yeah. sails a, a ship or some sort of a boat to sort of the edge of the ocean, what happens? I mean, I mean do you fall off? Uh, good one. Uh, wind, yeah, that's, it's like, okay, where's the edge? Okay, first off, the, the Thor movies did us no favors. It's not Asgard, right? It's not this flat disc with cosmic waterfalls flying in the vacuum of space. I mean, you're, again, you're sitting in a box. Where that box is, we don't know. But the edge on all sides would be the Antarctic coastline. And by that, I mean the beginning of the edge. We're living in basically a big pond a big saltwater pond, and stretched around us, around the entire outside, is the Antarctic edge, and then thousands of miles inland would probably be the barrier that we discovered around 1960, the United States and the Soviet Union at the time, mm. and then discovered, you know what, let's just keep this thing a secret for as long as we can. Okay. And, and do, do you find all this sort of interesting or amusing, or are you just convinced that you've actually found a fundamental truth that most other people don't grasp? Um, I didn't want to get into this to be to be for perfectly honest. I mean, yeah, I mean, I I looked at just about every conspiracy you can you can think of over the years, and some I liked and some I didn't like, and this one I absolutely did not want to look at. Uh, and I did I tried to disprove it. Everybody that gets into this community tries to shoot it down. Everybody because everybody hates it. It's the worst conspiracy you could ever think of because mm. it's the only thing we debunk to children. You know, up here in the States, uh, we, you know, since sixth grade, it's like, okay, here's the globe. We set it in the corner of your classroom and we leave it there until you graduate. And so I was really angry when I figured this out uh, initially is like, holy smokes, because it opens up everything. And, you know, if, if this can be kept a secret, then just about anything can. Okay. Well, at the it, same time, it's come. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Well, here's another question. I mean, uh, um, where you are, it is summer. I don't know exactly where you are, but where we are, it's it's winter. And believe it or not, in Australia, I mean, winter down here in Melbourne is freezing cold. I, I, if the right. earth is flat and the sun just shines on it from up above, well, why do we have seasons yeah. at different times of the year? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. Uh, the seasons, uh, think of, I don't know if you're old enough to remember vinyl and record players. I am. But... A, a needle on a record player, you know, it doesn't stay in the same path. You know, as the as you play the record, it either goes in. If you w played it in reverse, you know, it, it'd come back out. So that's really what creates the seasons are these subtle differences over time. You know, the sun doesn't stay in the same path, um, but it's also very very small. That might be your follow up question, which people's like, oh, okay, why do we even have time zones? Uh, you know, if the sun is, wouldn't the sun be lighting up everything simultaneously? It's like, no, um, we say the sun is very, very small. And the moon, the moon and the sun are roughly the same size and, and circle above you like a mobile above a child's crib, which are rough, it's roughly maybe 50 miles wide and, I don't know, let's say 3,000 miles high. At that size and that distance, yeah, you can, the, the light works out perfectly. Okay. Final question. If, if someone, let's say Elon Musk gets his, uh, uh, you know, commercial spacecraft up and running and it all works and, you know, I was to give you $100,000, so I'm going to buy you a ticket get to go up on whatever the Tesla spaceship is called and you could see yep. with your own eyes through the porthole that in fact the earth was round would you would you change your mind yep 
Oh, I, I'd quit. I'd, I'd quit instantly. In fact, you're not the first person to, to ask that. I think there was a British television team that, that wanted to do that very same thing. And I said, oh, yeah, I absolutely would quit. I mean, this is a blessing and a curse for me. So if I got up there, of course, they're never, ever going to let me up there ever in a million years. But if I got up there and saw it, I'd, I'd quit. I'd shut everything down, shut all my social media down and, and say, thank God I can go back to my normal life. All right. Thank you for your time. Mark Sargent there, American conspiracy theorist who is convinced that the world is flat. Now, there's all sorts of things like why do we have night and day time on different parts of the planet and why do we have different seasons and things? And I'm not really sure his explanations explains, but there it is. One double three six nine three. Having said that, as silly as some of what he said sounds, there's plenty of things in religion which are equally silly, and uh, we're often not allowed to question those. Okay, calls, reactions in a moment at 17... Hi, Larry Elder here. I never... ...who is a flat-earth conspiracy theorist. He did at least admit that if he could go up in a spaceship and see the round earth with his own eyes, then he would change his mind. Uh, plenty of emails coming in. N. Mitchell at 3aw.com.au. Norman says, having flown in the Concord at 55,000 feet in a clear sky, and I've witnessed the curvature of the earth, I can therefore confirm that the earth is indeed round. Uh, John joins us. Uh, John, go ahead. Hey, good day, Tom. Yes, John. Yeah, um, I'd just like to say about the ocean. It's level. There's no curve to the ocean. <laughs> Well, there is, because, you know, if you sail a boat far enough, it sort of disappears. So that's because it's going round the curve. No, no, no. That's no. due to perspective. When no. you look at the horizon from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, you're looking over 100 miles there. Mm -hmm. And then if you, if, you, if you Google the size of the Earth, it's 40,000 kilometres or 25,000 miles. That equates to eight inches per mile squared. So when you look at the horizon, you're looking over 100 miles there, even if you doubled it, there's still no curvature. No, well, and, but, but, but John... And when they, but, show, you, but John, when they show you curvature, yeah. you're looking at a fish on lens. Well, but John, the thing is, though, if you if you watch a ship with a with a tall mast sailing away, you know, eventually the ship disappears and the mast disappears and eventually yeah. it disappears. Yeah. So why is that? Yeah. Well, that's due to perspective. If you get a camera and you zoom back in on that ship or boat, whatever it is, you can see the bottom of it. Well, and the horizon's still behind it. Well, I can tell you, John, I've, I've got a, um, I've, I've been at a beach house with a very powerful telescope, and I can tell you the ships still disappear. Thank you. Uh, Mark joins us. Uh, Mark, good morning. Yeah, g'day, Tom. Um, if, the, if the Earth was flat, I always wonder, why does the sun at sunset and sunrise always graze underneath the uh, the clouds yes. that implies that it's dipping below? If the sun was always on top of the clouds, you wouldn't get that orange kind of glow under the clouds at that specific time. I know, I, I, I know. I'm trying to think, does the sun in the flat earth world, does the sun sort of rotate around the sides or does it go underneath the world for a while? But in which case the entire planet would be dark. I mean, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. All right. Thank you, Mark. Um, Len, good morning. Uh, good morning, Tom. Uh, I have a PhD in astrophysics and in my previous life I was a scientist and now I'm a science teacher. It's very difficult to argue with these people. It's almost a waste of time and oxygen, really. Um, the mark of a pseudoscientist is that when presented with confounding evidence, they stick to their theory and mm. throw out the evidence. Uh, There's a fabulous documentary on Netflix called Behind the Curve, starring Mark Sargent, and it's fascinating. It's very insightful to look at their thinking and the way they come up with their ideas. Uh, and they do experiments to prove that the Earth is flat, and when it when they don't work, they throw out the experiment and keep their theory. Well, yeah, and you're, you're right, Len, and thank you. Um, and that was Mark Sargent with whom we just spoke before. But, um, I mean, people do the same thing with politics or, or with their philosophical beliefs. What they do is they, and the internet facilitates this, they go out and they seek out other people and other points of view which match their own. And they say, oh, look, you all agree with me, we must be right. And, and they won't talk to anybody who disagrees. And the whole point about politics and philosophy and any of these sorts of things is there's always two sides and usually three or four. But people seek out the one that, for whatever reason, they already believe. And you're quite right, Len. I mean, science can disprove this in a moment. But but here's the thing. You've got movies, which a lot of people think are like documentaries. Like, take Diamonds Are Forever, James Bond film, 1971. There's a, there's a scene where Bond is driving a vehicle through a whole series of movie um, lots like which are being shot. And one of, the, one of the films being shot shows a moon landing. And the implication is, and this is 1971, when the real moon landings were actually happening, but the implication is is that, the, in fact, the moon landings were faked. 
And along with the flat earth conspiracy theory, there's a, a considerable number of people out there who think that the moon landings were all fake. Now, to what end, I don't know. I don't know. There was a movie in the late 1970s, who's, and it starred O.J. Simpson. The, um, the, the name will come to me in a moment. And it was actually about faking a Mars landing because they found out that the, um, the rocket simply couldn't make it. So they faked it. And the problem was they set the rocket up without the astronauts and the rocket blew up on the way back in. And so they have to kill the astronauts. Anyway, one double three six nine three. Uh, Pat, hello. Uh, yeah, g'day, Tom. How are you? Yeah, good, Pat. Uh, does this guy have any sort of science degree or background or is he just... Um, I, I'm interested to know what drugs he's been taking, A, convince him of what he thinks, and B, uh, dispute any signs that uh, contradicts his theory. Well, Pat, no, I mean, it, it, none of this is scientific. It's, it's, it, as you said, it's some, you know, God has designed this weird box that the, the flat earth sort of floats in. But it, it's not very different, Pat, to what religion used to say. You know, religion used to say that the earth is at the centre of the universe and the sun and all the planets and everything go around the earth and it was actually heresy for quite a long time like if you said the opposite you could be you could be tried and put to death pat's uh, left us the film i was thinking about where they fake a mars landing was capricorn one 1977 I must have seen it when i was 10 or 11 years old it's still a great movie um and it's about uh well it's a conspiracy about having the u.s government having to fake a mars landing and the astronauts don't go along with it in the end and uh, manage to make the government look bad. Look it up. Uh, Bernie, hello. Well, good day, Tom. That guy debunked his own theory by saying up here in the US, insinuating that they were in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, actually, that's, if the uh, Earth was flat, we'd all be on the same plane. That's a very good point, actually, because uh, you're right. I mean, they love referring to Australia as down under and uh, America as being above. And, of course, on a flat Earth, we're all on the same plane, aren't we? Yeah, exactly right. All right, thanks, Bernie. Uh, Chris, hello. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to correct that caller that rang up a couple of moments ago saying that if you stand at the seashore and you look out, it's a couple of hundred miles long. That's actually incorrect. If you're standing on the side of the seashore, um, you can be looking out and the horizon actually disappears at around 16 nautical miles from where you're standing. Yeah, so it's about, it's about so, 18 miles and 28 or 30 k's or something, isn't it? Uh, well, whatever, uh, whatever uh, 16 nautical miles is. Yeah. So yeah. No, you're right. And, and I mean, obvious things like that, like a ship's mast disappearing. If it was flat, if you could still see the mast but not see the rest of the ship, that, that's got to be telling you something. I mean, if it's, if it's just perspective, you're either, you, you would either see the whole ship or if you can't see that far, you would see nothing. But the point is the ship gradually disappears from your vision or from your view because it's, it's going around the curve of the water. Thank you, Chris. Keep the calls coming. One double three six nine three. Jane Holmes joins us later on this hour with TV. She wants to know how many streaming accounts you have. We've got too many. We've got Netflix, Stan, Amazon, and I guess Foxtel. You have to add to that because you can stream Foxtel. That's four, and that's too many. And one of the reasons I've watched anything on Disney or Paramount is I just cannot bring myself to subscribe to another. How many have you got? One double three six nine three. Uh, news headlines also ahead with Pat Mitchell at twenty eight past eleven. Three AW traffic for supple digital marketing, bringing the traffic flat. That um, the cats would have by now knocked everything off the edge. Well, <laughs> the thing about it is, though, Ray, it is, it is not dissimilar to religion. You sort of have to suspend disbelief of basic physical facts like what the sun does and the moon and all that sort of thing and just, just believe a whole lot of stuff which really can't be proven and can probably be disproven, but people believe it nonetheless. Well, you're speaking of religion, religion, religion I can't speak. Uh, happy St. Peter and Paul's Day, and that's for Roger. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Robert, uh, good morning. Good morning, Tom, and thank you for my call to you. Um, I've got a good news story from my bank, the Combank. I was... Mate, there's, um... <laughs> if anyone could explain how, when that Apollo rocket took off, there was a, a long rocket with a nice cone on the end of it where all the pilots were, uh, where all the astronauts were, mm -hmm. and then it somehow turned into this aluminium foil-looking thing that looked nothing like a cone when they landed on the moon. 
And then when they landed back in, in the ocean, it was a nice cone again. Where did they stop off on the way? Uh, well, Who actually took the footage? No, the... the, 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 the it, footage of the, of the land or leaving the moon? When well, they, they, they up off the atmosphere of the moon. All right, well, well, there's no atmosphere on the moon, but they, they set up a camera, a remote TV camera, and that's what filmed the astronauts and was left and, and still operating. So... The, the, the moon lander and the re-entry capsule were all inside the top part of the Saturn V rocket. In fact, there was another bit as well that was orbiting the moon. So you had the you have the bit that was orbiting the moon, which had uh, a booster, a small booster, and it had the uh, cone-shaped re-entry vehicle. You also had the moon lander, which was attached to that, but that was that was left. The, the top part of the moon lander got the astronauts back up to the bit of the rocket that was orbiting the moon. That all went back to Earth, and the last bit was ditched, or the second last bit, and the final bit, the cone, is what is what landed back on Earth. And so when you look at the Saturn V rocket, there's, I think, one, two, three, four, there's about seven or eight bits of it. Only one bit of it made it back to Earth. Anyway, thank you, Tony. Another Tony joins us here at the Festival of Tonys. Tony, good morning. G'day, Tom. How are you doing? Yeah, good, Tony. What's happening? Um, so... One of my granddaughters started high school this year, year seven.